much. Let's talk a little bit about this and the historic day up on Capitol Hill. We've got now in that box over there, <laughs> screen right, we've got <laughs> New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. She served as a member of President Trump's impeachment defense team last year. And Congresswoman, uh, today is another, a second impeachment day. Sounds like the vote will happen later tonight. Uh, it also sounds as if at least a dozen of your fellow Republicans will join the Democrats and vote to impeach the president. You, however, will not be on the list. That is correct, Steve. I think it's going to be a challenge for those Republicans as they stand in front of their voters. We are seven days between the transition between the inaugural to President-elect Biden. This is a snap impeachment. This is what Democrats have been focused on, frankly, since the president was elected in 2016. They are still focusing on impeaching him even after the 2020 elections. So this is purely political. And at a moment when we really should be focused on uniting the country, which is what I'm focused on, Democrats are choosing to further divide and further erode uh, and really create this partisanship in, in an increasing way as we head towards the inaugural. So it's wrong. It's a snap impeachment. It's not even going through committees. It's purely political. Uh, of course, the violence is wrong. I condemn the violence, as did the president. But we should ensure that we have a safe transition on January 20th. So out of all of the impeachment managers that Nancy Pelosi could have selected, she picked nine, and one of them, Eric Swalwell. Why do you think she did that? Eric Swalwell is a puppet for Nancy Pelosi. I mean, I still think that we deserve answers, we being his colleagues in Congress, as to why he can sit on the House Intelligence Committee when he has been compromised. Uh, he needs to answer those questions for uh, his fellow Intelligence Committee members. He is from California. He votes as Nancy Pelosi tells him to. And I think that's why he was chosen. Um, he is purely a partisan anti-Trump warrior in the House. He's more focused on that than representing his constituents. And uh, I think it's an embarrassment. I think the American people can see through it. So Harvard announced Tuesday that uh, Elise Stefanik will be removed from, his, from her senior uh, advisory committee position, says that this is due to her public assertions about voter fraud in November's presidential election that have no basis in evidence. Uh, and he has made statements in the past. So that is the uh, attack on you. What is your response to being removed from your alma mater? Well, first of all, that's not the reason why I was removed from the committee. The reason why I was removed from the committee is uh, Harvard is bowing to the woke left mob. There was a petition signed by hundreds of alumni. This is nothing new to me. There are petitions like this all of the time, but they are purging supporters of President Trump. The Institute of Politics has a long history of being bipartisan. It's an important organization that's meant to inspire young people to pursue public service in both parties. I am the only Trump voter on the board of the Institute of Politics. So now they have eliminated the one Trump voter, and now they have 100% Joe Biden voters. And when it comes to the objections, I stand up by my decision to object to four states, the electors from four states, and I focus on the constitutional issues, not on the voter fraud issues. Right. I really focused on how state elections write election law, not unelected judges, governors who unilaterally changed election law in states like mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Georgia, Wisconsin, and Michigan. This is partisan. This is political. But what's really sad is this is the trend we're seeing on college campuses across America, that there is no tolerance for conservative viewpoints. Make no mistake, this is just going to be one example. Yeah. Harvard is already refusing to accept speakers who have worked in the Trump administration. And the people it hurts the most are the students. Well, uh, you know, you declined to resign. Uh, you stood your ground, but then they removed you anyway. Uh, you graduated from Harvard with a degree in politics, so I want you to talk politically for a moment about the future of the Republican Party, because you've got, on the Senate side, it sounds like Mitch McConnell is better than 50-50 that he might vote for impeaching the president. Kevin McCarthy is uh, pushing for cens censuring the president as well. What happens to those 75 million Americans, and they weren't all Republicans necessarily, but who voted for Donald Trump? They're confused. Going forward, what is the future of the Republican Party? Because we know that there are going to be some people who will always, uh, to their grave, love Donald Trump. But at the same time, the party marches on. I 
think the future of the Republican Party is bright. If you look at the 2020 November elections, yes, we were disappointed about the presidential, but let's look at the facts. The president grew the Republican Party's support among African Americans, among Hispanics, and earned more votes than any other Republican presidential candidate in our nation's history. In addition, we won back a number of seats in the House. Nancy Pelosi has a very perilous majority, and we have increased numbers, for example, of Republican women. I'm a big believer that the people are what make up the Republican Party, not the elected officials. And I think that's the trend we're going to see. I think you're going to see types of non-traditional candidates run. And I also think you will see Republicans who are very much energized. And decisions by Harvard are an example of what energizes Republicans. They know that it's not right for big tech to censor our views. They know that it's not right for college campuses to dismiss any conservative viewpoints, being unwilling to even have that debate. So I believe the future is bright. I will be a part of that future and uh, just appreciate the opportunity to represent my district. Mm -hmm. Congresswoman, we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right.